Today we are going to talk about DJI O3 Digital FPV system and specifically data collection. Now data is not really something we touch on much in FPV, however it is something I have discussed many times in the past around DJI and unfortunately it is something that you need to be aware of about O3. Now just to be clear this is not an anti-DJI video, this is not a video saying you should not buy those products, however this is a video that I want to make sure you have the information that you need to make an informed decision. DJI products have always collected various pieces of data and O3 is no different and today I just want to share with you some information that you will find interesting around this and it should help you make an informed decision moving forward. Anyway let's get on with it and let's take a look at what this is all about. Now DJI products have always collected data for diagnostics and repair purposes. On board most DJI drones there's always been this little SD card and later on over time we had storage built into the flight controller. This data has been used for many reasons and in the past you were actually able to access this data via the fly app such as flight logs but also it would be able to be shared onto apps and allow you to actually use that in different ways downloading it as a CSV and allowing you to map your flights. Data collection though on DJI drones has always raised a few eyebrows because there's always been quite a lot of data being collected that users have not always been able to gain access to. Unfortunately the situation is very much the same with DJI O3 and whilst this is just an FPV system it doesn't mean it isn't logging information on board. When you connect your O3 ear unit to Assistant 2 you have the option of upgrading the firmware but there is also a section for the onboard logs. To do this you simply plug in the USB-C connection, go into the Assistant 2 and then down the side here you will see an option called Log Export. Under this it will show you all of the logs that are available to be seen or downloaded I should say on the O3 ear unit. Now looking down the list you can see it starts at 0 and it goes all the way up to 99, it's basically 99 logs located on my unit. Now this is my bench test in a unit and what's quite interesting is not only the amount of logs that it has stored but the actual file size of some of these logs as well. Scrolling down there is one that is even over 1 gigabyte in size. Now you have the option to download these logs simply by clicking each one or there is an option over here to select all and download them all into a folder on your PC. Looking at the combined file size of that log data you can see it comes to roughly 4.3 gigabytes of information. Now in the past you did have the ability to read these files but unfortunately DJI added some encryption a little while ago that prevented you from looking at the aircraft logs directly. You could though use programs such as DATCON, ADATA and others that would allow you to convert the file into a CSV but unfortunately as of today with regards to the flight logs that you will find on the ear units or the aircraft directly they are now encrypted and there is nothing you can do as a user to be able to view them. Now just to show you the situation is exactly the same on the goggles, I've connected them to Assistant 2 and if we go into log export you will then see all of the logs that are listed on the FPV goggles too as well. Now the O3 system is not the only FPV system to collect data, for instance here we're looking at a set of V2 goggles and again you can see that there are logs on board. What is interesting though is the size of the files on board compared to what we're seeing on O3. The files on O3 are much larger than the files that we were getting on the original DJI FPV goggles or the original FPV ear units. DJI has always logged data in FPV but what is interesting is the amount of data with O3 seems to have increased substantially. Now an interesting observation looking at the login is that the O3 data is about three to four times the size of the data being logged on the original FPV system. That would imply DJI are logging more information. Now O3 obviously has a lot more going on than the original FPV system did and in fact O3 is 
basically the same unit as what the Avata has. It just doesn't have its own IMU, but the main chipset is the same chipset being used here as it was there that was running the flight control software on the Avata, whereas here it is simply doing the video processing, but it's not unrealistic to think that DJI is actually logging as much data as they could, including maybe that gyro data from the camera. It also, though, begs the question, are they logging information from the UART or the MSP line? We don't know, but it isn't unreasonable to think that DJI is also going to log that MSP data that is going into the ear unit via the UART, and that could be information such as you see on your OSD, including GPS information as well, if you did have GPS on board. We don't know for sure exactly what DJI is logging, but what we do know is that there is an increased file size and it isn't beyond the realms of possibility that you're going to have a lot more info logged, including that MSP data. Unfortunately, though, we don't know for sure because we can't view the logs. Now, I personally don't have a problem with DJI logging information on their products to help with diagnostics and support. But there are some things here that I do have a real issue with. Number one, there is no way for you or me or an end user to delete these logs. Updating the firmware, resetting the ear unit does not remove them. They are a permanent fixture on board the internal storage. Furthermore, there is no way as a user for me to be able to view these logs. There are no programs available to view them that work on the O3E unit and the logs are actually encrypted to prevent you being able to view the data that they store. DJI do not provide users any way of being able to look at the log data that is on board their devices and it is only able to be used by DJI themselves. For me, the real issue here is not the fact that DJI do log information, it's the fact that me as a user has no way to review that information or delete it should I wish to. DJI has every opportunity to provide users with a piece of software that would allow them to view this data themselves and it would actually be a very, very handy thing, yet they choose not to. In the end, what it tells me is DJI doesn't want us as users to know what data they are logging on their products. And as a result of this, it is something that you should bear in mind when buying any DJI product. This really isn't specific to the DJI O3 system, but we have not seen this level of logging in the past on the ear units. DJI do also log information on the goggles as well, exactly the same way as they do on the ear units. So there is data being logged on the ear unit and data being logged on the goggles. And again, the situation is exactly the same. There is no way for me as a user to be able to view, use or remove that data should I have any privacy concerns. Now, DJI's behavior around this data acquisition has always been the same with their consumer drones. In the past, you could actually view the logs, but they later encrypted them. And we're at the point today where we have no way of being able to view that data at all. The only people who can are DJI. Now, it is fair for me to say that DJI have had a number of accusations laid at them over the years with regards to data usage and people's personal information. However, there has never really been concrete information that they are taking users' data without their permission. DJI have always said that they only have the data you choose to share with them, but that doesn't mean for one minute I like the fact that they're logging data that I can't get to see. I have no issues with the system logging data, but I would like a way of being able to remove that data should I wish or view it for my own purposes. And it leads to situations like this where people like me and others are able to question their integrity and their behavior because of the lack of transparency around the data that they are collecting. Now, as I have already mentioned, there is data being collected on the ear unit and there is data being collected on the goggles. However, I will stress again, there is nothing to say any of that data is being sent to DJI, even if you connect these to the likes of the assistant or the fly app.
My understanding and DJI's response has always been that they do not take the data, they only have data when you choose to share it with them, but some of those file sizes are rather large and it does raise some interesting questions about what kind of information is in them, especially when you're getting files of around a gig. Anyway, the point of this video was never about me saying DJI is bad. The point of this video is about me trying to give you information so you can make an informed decision. Again, personally, I have no issues with the data being collected, but I don't like the fact I can't remove it and I don't like the fact I can't see it. But you will have to make your own decisions based on your own personal situation. Anyway, that's it from me on this one. I hope you have found this video interesting. If you have, please do let me know what you think in the comment section. I would love to hear your thoughts on this. DJI, if you are watching this, please provide us a way of deleting this data, but also a way of viewing it as well. Data is useful for us in FPV as well, and the more we get, the better. So please, rather than put it behind a closed wall, give us the option of being able to use it. And that way you would also show a lot more transparency about the why you're actually collecting it in the first place. Finally, I just want to say, if you have found this video useful, please do consider supporting the channel via Patreon. I would not be able to keep this channel going without your support. And I want to say a massive thank you to everyone who does support the channel via Patreon. And if you think we've earned that support today, please do consider checking it out. Anyway, that's it from me. Stay safe. I'll speak to you soon.